Welcome to a lesson on rooted trees. So far we have thought of trees only as a particular kind of graph. However, it is often useful to add additional structure to trees to help solve problems. Data is often structured like a tree. This book, for example, has a tree structure. If you wanted to draw a tree for the book, number one, we would draw a vertex for the book itself for the text. Number two, we would then draw vertices for each chapter connected to the book vertex. And then number three, under each chapter, we would draw a vertex for each section connecting it to the chapter it belongs to. I've included an abbreviated tree on the right, where on the top we have the text of the book. This is connected to the two vertices for chapter one and chapter two. And then we have four vertices for the sections. Notice under chapter one, we have the section 1.1 and 1.2. These vertices are connected to the vertex for chapter one. And then we have the sections 2.1 and 2.2, which are connected to the vertex for chapter two. Notice how the graph is connected and there are no cycles. This is a tree, but a tree with a clear hierarchy, which is not present if we don't identify the book vertex as the top. As soon as one vertex of a tree is designated as the top or root, then every other vertex on the tree can be characterized by its position relative to the root. This works because there is a unique path between any two vertices in a tree. So from any vertex, we can travel back to the root in exactly one way. This always allows us to describe how distinct vertices in a rooted tree are related. If two vertices are adjacent, then we say one of them is the parent of the other, which is called the child of the parent. Of the two, the parent is the vertex that is closer to the root. Thus, the root of a tree is a parent, but it is not a child of any vertex. All non-root vertices have exactly one parent. So if we take a look at the tree below and designate A as the root, notice vertices C and F are adjacent, as well as vertices C and G. Because C is closer to the root A, we say C is the parent of F and G, and F and G are children of C. Similarly, Notice the vertices D and H are adjacent, as well as the vertices D and I. Because D is closer to the root, we say D is the parent of H and I, and H and I are the children of D. Next, the child of a child of a vertex is called the grandchild of the vertex, which is the grandparent. More in general, we say that a vertex V is a descendant of a vertex U provided use a vertex on the path from V to the root. And then we call U an ancestor of V. So again, going back down to our tree, notice K is the child of the child of C. This indicates that K is a grandchild of C and C is a grandparent of K. Also notice I is the child of the child of B. This indicates that I is a grandchild of B and B is a grandparent of I. In addition, since vertex B is on the path from vertex I back to the root, we can say that I is a descendant of B, and B is an ancestor of I. Similarly, we can say that K is a descendant of C, and C is an ancestor of K. For most trees, there will be pairs of vertices, neither of which is a descendant of the other. We can call these cousins or siblings. In fact, vertices V and W are called siblings if they have the same parent. Note that siblings are never adjacent. So going back to our graph one last time, notice vertices F and G share the same parent of C. F and G are siblings. Similarly, notice vertices D and E share the same parent. D and E are siblings. Also notice vertices E and F are on the same level but have different parents. We could say E and F are cousins. I hope you found this helpful.